Welcome back to 1111 Overland. I'm Jeremy, and today we're down in Moab, Utah for the 2023 Easter Jeep Safari. Really excited to get on the trail. It's been a long time since I've done a trail with the Easter Jeep Safari, and I'm really looking forward to it. I got the kids loaded up in the Jeep. I've got my JK fully loaded and ready, and right behind me is Chris in his 2022 4xE with a two and a half inch lift. If you've seen some of the other videos, you've seen that we lifted that two and a half inches and took it on uh, on fins and things. It did great. Now this is a five rated trail, so it's significantly different than three, four range that we did before, but we are very confident that his Jeep will do well. And we're excited to, to tackle this today. We've got a lot of other Jeeps on the trail today. I think there's a total of 33 Jeeps that are planning on going on this trail today. And if you've been to Easter Jeep Safari in Moab, you know that that can make for some really long days, but also for some really fun days. This is a five, which means there should be some good obstacles. And I've never done this trail before. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of challenges and new things it brings. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and look forward to sharing Porcupine Rim with you today. Welcome again to 1111 Overland. Just driving through the Sand Flats Recreation Area, I made the mistake of having my Falcon set to three, so all the washboard roads kind of chattered our teeth a bit, but it wasn't bad. Um, we made it to this first little spot. We're gonna air down the tires for those who haven't done it already, and then uh, get underway. Uh, there's a quick little bathroom break here for anyone who needs it. Girls are all hopping out. Um, we've got a lot fewer Jeeps this time than, than was originally planned, so this should help the day go really quick, uh, but I'm excited, Porcupine Rim. Here's our trail leader right here, the man himself. It's gonna be a great, great day. All right, we're on the road, headed towards Porcupine Rim. We're gonna make a turn here and head down into it. Kids, you ready? You excited? A lot of enthusiasm back there. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that obstacle was uh, the first little one that was a little bit of a challenge. If you stay to the left even a little bit, you slide off to the side. Um, I wish I'd gotten a video of Chris doing it. He slid way to the side and then gunned it and was able to get it up okay, but quite a few people are wanting a spot, so we've paused for a moment to let them get up safely. Uh, the Jeep in front of us slid a little bit, but then she really corrected well and then climbed right up to the top. So. Uh, it's been a fun, fun morning so far. It's awesome to be on a trail that we've never been on before, someplace that's totally new. And we've been coming here to, you know, to Moab for Easter Jeep Safari for so many times, and it's never been a time where it's like, hey, this is a brand new trail. It's always been these kind of repeat trails. So to be up here a little bit higher elevation with all this variety and terrain, a beautiful canyon down below, we're seeing some wildlife. It's been a really, really great day. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Most of the early part of Porcupine Rim is uh, kind of these just regular rocks you just drive over. It's not a tough trail. Um, I think someone in a stock SUV would find it challenging and would scrape a few times. But if you've got decent sized tires, uh, you should be able to conquer most of it. It'll be interesting to see if further ahead there are more challenging obstacles. So 
that obstacle is a fun little one. Uh, you simply come to the left side, turn right to line up your tires straight as you approach the rock. Uh, the rock's kind of at an angle to the trail. Climb up over top of it, and then uh, and then you turn back again towards the left, and that clears you. So relatively easy and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, a couple of people struggled, but most people came right up over top of it. So that obstacle was kind of tricky. Um, Chris came through, he was able to get through it okay, but he said he hit something pretty hard. So we're gonna take a look underneath his Jeep and see if we see any damage. We're guessing it's just a skid plate, which is why we have skid plates, so that they could take the damage when we don't want to. Um, but let's take a look just in case to make sure that it's not something more serious. So it sounds like it was the rear tire on the rock slider, you so. Your, you hit your ass fear. I hit my ass fear? Oh, yeah. the slide. More importantly, I want to know how come you're in a t-shirt and yet I'm in a sweatshirt and a coat. I think I might need to take off a few layers. Plus, it's really nice outside. It's gorgeous out here is what it is. Oh. You can see are you talking about yourself or are you talking about the weather? It kind of hand in hand, right? Go ahead and like the video if you think Chris is a handsome devil. <laughs> oh dear, you just ruined your video. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just lost like, tw you know, 300 subscribers right there. So a series of, of steps um, can create a little bit of an obstacle for some, uh, so be careful as you're going up it. But otherwise, Porcupine Rim seems like a really, like a perfect trail for me. I love a little, little bit of challenge, a lot of variety. The only thing I'd like to add is maybe like a ghost town or a mine or something else. If you could change anything about this trail so far, what would you change? I'd love to hear in the comments. Kids, what about you? What would you change about this trail? What would you add or change or, or adjust? Mm -hmm. You first. <laughs> um, I don't know. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Um, probably, um, I'd probably add like harder obstacles. Like I know this might be hard for you, but like it's funner when it's scary. Okay. So he said there's an obstacle here that's not really an obstacle, but it's a muddy like, mess. Like I think he said to go like left things. and then go oh, right. Oh, sand dunes? But I'm not sure, but he said to watch the guy in front of you. John's talking on the radio. So some, some sand dunes or some little, um, like some fast parts. Okay. Jake, what about you? What would you add or change? Um, I don't know. We're only like not that far of the trail. Yeah. So. so there might be some good stuff. Yep. Well, we're enjoying it. snow on the sides of the trail reminds us this is still early spring and we've had a really really wet winter um, seems to be getting more and more we're only at 6400 feet of elevation so it doesn't seem terribly high but uh, maybe this part of the mountain just gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of shade
some of these obstacles can be de deceptively tricky. Um, they seem simple, but when you combine the water from the snow melt off and the little rivers that are running through here uh, that cake your tires up with mud, you start to lose traction and grip. And so something that you would normally think is very simple, uh, covered in mud with your wheels not having as much grip, can become more challenging. So keep your eye out for it. Uh, be careful about it. Try to dry, keep your tires on the drier spots as much as possible and you shouldn't have problems with your uh, yeah. traction. Directly across from the left, Jeremy is seven mile rim. Corner up here, there is a nasty opposite to call. So, girls, what do you think of the trail so far? It's cool. <laughs> Sweet o Dorito. <laughs> wow. Future YouTube stars there, very <laughs> verbose. Porcupine Rim is a popular mountain biking trail too, so expect to see a few mountain bikers riding around. Um, if you see them, just pause, let them go by. Uh, they can usually move pretty quickly through these rocks and, and get on past you. Nice work, son. Nice job, Jake. Coming straight. Little driver. Okay, make the left hand Good turn. Good tip. Slowly down again. Nice job, Chris. Didn't go slow Well, until that moment. Until then.
perfect right there. Nice and easy, you're going to come down. Well, I don't think this obstacle has a name. It's not that challenging for a, enough for a name, but it is definitely challenging enough to need a spot to do it the right way. There's some relatively large boulders that you're gonna wanna make sure you stay close to this tree right here. If you hug close to that tree and come down, you should be just fine. If you've got some great articulation, you can come more towards the center, but then you gotta tackle this rock right here with you, your driver, your passenger tire. So by staying closer to that tree, you stop yourself from having to have that big drop on your front end and your back end. Still a great obstacle and the view at the end is such an awesome reward. The views up here are absolutely spectacular, especially with the LaSalle so covered in snow in the background. Uh, that valley out there, I'm not quite sure what valley it is. It looks a lot like the valley you drive through when you're going out east of Moab along the river um, out to trails like Dome Plateau. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly, and we need to spend a little more time maybe at our lunch spot. We'll sit down and look at it closely and and identify exactly which spot we're at. But regardless, I've never seen it so green here. It is absolutely beautiful. We've got the town of Moab off in that distance. The opposite side, we've got this amazing view. We're up on the top of the ridge and uh, the trail couldn't be better. This is an absolutely beautiful, perfect day. And we are so glad to be here at Easter Jeep Safari 2023. Well, we stopped for lunch. Everybody's hanging out here on the cliff edge. Say hello. Hi. Nice day. Nice day and a nice view. These are Fisher Towers. Um, you'll see those towers as you're driving along the road, uh, right along the side of the river, headed west of Moab. And if you look way off in the distance out there, that's the mountain where you go on top of the world. If you go top of the world, you're off facing the south here. So really incredible view. Um, what a privilege it is to be able to have a vehicle that can bring us up to a spot like this so we can enjoy a little bit of Vienna sausage sandwich together. All right, I'm the only one having that, but I guess Jake's having it too. What are you guys, what are you guys eating? Egg salad, a muffin, <laughs> a sandwich, turkey and Swiss, sandwich. potato salad, all delicious, especially with an amazing view. What an awesome spot for a group picture in front of your Jeep with this amazing valley in the background. Really nice of the trail leader to set everyone up like that and then capture that for them all. What an awesome day. I think we're at the end of the trail now. We basically go back the way we came. Nothing too terribly challenging. Uh, nothing that gave us any kind of pause. Jeeps performed fantastically. Really, really glad that we were able to come and do this trail today. So highly, highly recommend um, this trail, if you are, are a beginner wanting to learn, uh, take someone who knows what they're doing, can spot you on a couple steps. Uh, if you're a veteran, this is going to be something you'll just really enjoy the views, 
the variety, and uh, just relaxing into a, a great day of off-roading. Girls, what's been your favorite part of the trail so far? Uh, lunch. Lunch, why? The view. It's pretty. Great view, great view. Coming down this spot was a lot easier because we had gravity helping us out. Now that we're going up it, uh, it's been a lot bigger of a challenge. We're having to stack a few rocks here and there for those who don't have the kind of clearance to be able to get up and over it. And a lot of people are experiencing what we call the turtle effect, where basically they go up on top, their belly hits the, the rock right in the middle, and they get stuck. Kind of like that. Most people could try and power out of it put a little acceleration into it and get out. Others are trying to choose a different line. And because every vehicle is so different between tire size and uh, suspension and wheelbase and things like that, there's no one perfect line for everyone. So you have to kind of look at each one, look at each vehicle and assess based on what they're doing and what's right for them. It's a steep one. That way. Yeah. <laughs> Above all else, trust your spotter. Your spotter can see things you can't. You gotta be able to look and see what lines he's suggesting for you. And if that doesn't work, he'll reassess, either putting some extra rocks underneath to give you some extra height or have you choose a different line. But trust your spotter and try to go slow. Usually speed is not your friend on things like this. Going slow allows your lockers to go into place. It allows your traction to get to do the right thing. And by going slow, you also prevent damage and danger. Going fast can sometimes cause your tires to bounce you off into somewhere that's not safe or flip you over. So going nice and slow allows you to maintain control. Does he have, Does he have his lockers engaged? Yes. Okay. You guys want to get the push? Go back half a foot. Half a foot. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah, that did it. Great example of how every vehicle is different. With that short wheelbase, he's able to make contact with rocks that the longer wheelbase Jeeps simply couldn't. There's gonna be other times when he's gonna struggle and vehicles with longer wheelbase will remain in contact. It's all about keeping contact with the rock and keeping your tires in the right places. So it's a tricky and fun challenge every single time. Well, we didn't expect an absolutely incredible view coming down. I mean, it's been beautiful up here, but I don't think we realized what we were driving past as we were coming up the hill, not a turn around back down and see these amazing mountains right in our view as we're coming. It's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Girls, what do you think? Really pretty, gorgeous, yeah.
This has been and continues to be 1111 Overland.